everybody i'm hoping that you can hear me um do let me know if you can see me i'm just going to have this next to me so i can see some of the comments as well um oops and i'm going to have to just turn my sound down that's good so just move the dog's legs out of the way oh so can you all hear me hello everybody do say that you can hear me because if you don't i'll be really sad <laughs> yeah you can you can hear me hi everybody I had a bit of a panic at one point because it said, oh, you can hear and see me clearly. Thanks, Evie. Right, I'm going to put Evie's messages on there because she's going to be able to um, she's going to be able to help me with questions and stuff. So hi, everybody. And um, thank you all so much for joining me again. Um, we are going to be drawing these cat eyes here. And what I've done is I've managed to put like a little picture of the cat eyes up at the top there because I know some people said that was something that they would find quite useful. So I'm working on pastel mat, but you can work on any any white paper. I've got a load of different blue colours, some purple, some, you know, all of that type of stuff. And um, I'm going to make a start. So if you've got any questions, do put the do put your questions in um you know in the live chat and then Evie will be able to um, uh, send me anything that needs answering or or she and Vicky will be able to answer for you so we're going to make a start on the um, the left eye uh, first of all and what I'm going to do is we'll work on one eye and then we'll move over to the other and because they're quite sort of small areas well depending on how large you've created your um, image then um, we're going to kind of work on the whole thing all in all in one go if you see what I mean so we're not going to be working on tiny little areas we're going to be doing layer over layer over layer uh, now cat eyes are uh, I'm not going to say they're easy because clearly they're not but we don't have all of the crazy um, eyelid stuff that goes on with dogs and horses so you've got quite a clean outline around there so there's not a huge amount to do um, outside a cat's eyes like you do with a dog or a horse where they've got those you know they've got mad uh, you know I uh, eyelids and everything so that's quite good um, and then the the color that we're going to be using inside we're going to be um, doing sort of like a little bit of burnishing in there as well so there's going to be some uh, some different techniques what we're wanting is we're wanting a really lovely smooth glassy finish okay so I'm going to do what I usually do and I'm going to start with just um a little bit of an outline around the eye just so that we get a you know a, a better a better idea of what's going on now i'm using a Payne's gray oh, i've got a bit of putty eraser stuck to it i'm using a um polychromos Payne's gray here you can use anything you like and i'm going to use really soft pressure now i'm using pastel matte which is not a paper well, it's a paper that some people don't like. It's a paper that other people absolutely adore. Um, it's kind of like a bit of a Marmite paper is pastel map um, because it's uh, it's got a bit of a, well, quite a lot of a texture on it. So I'm using really light pressure. Now, if you've watched my streams before, you will know that my light pressure, I'll just put my horrible hand underneath here. My light pressure is like that. So we're not indenting our skin. Um, I find that the lighter pressure you use in the initial parts of doing your um, doing your drawing are it, it kind of it helps. Uh, it helps in the way that if you make mistakes, it's easier to um, it's easier to remove, um, and it helps because you can uh, you can get more layers on your paper. So I've just had a question through about how do I get the um, the image onto the paper. There are loads of different ways of getting the image onto your paper. How I got this one down onto my paper was I um, I put the, the image on my screen and I flipped the image on my screen in Photoshop so it was the other way around. Then I put a piece of paper over the top of it and I drew over the top with... Um, this is a Caran d'Ache uh, graph wood and this is a 9b pencil so it's a really really soft pencil and I, I just did a quick tracing over the top of the eyes brought the paper off the screen put it onto my pastel mat turned it so that the 
the pencil was against the paper uh, and then kind of rubbed over the top of it and the outline just went onto the eyes. But with cat eyes, to be honest, you could just kind of draw a couple of sort of like oblongy shapes and you'd be fine. Um, so we're just going to, and you can see my outline is very, very basic. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of, uh, just kind of going round, just so that we get the outline correct, really. Even when you trace, it's it's you still got to kind of you know make adjustments and everything like that because it's not always perfect. You'd have thought it would be, but it isn't. Okay, so just coming in there again. I apologise for any uh, external sounds. Um, right, and then we're just going to come back down here. Now, the reason I've used the Payne's Grey rather than the um, the dark sepia that I usually use is because the Payne's Grey is, is very bluey coloured grey. These eyes are obviously blue and the grey around the sort of outside area of the eye is quite bluey. So we're just going to bring that in there and it just gives us a nice a nice base. Um, you know to start working on it. it gives us a little bit of context as well as to how the eye works um, now if you wanted to add a little bit of fur and everything around the eye you could do but you don't have to um, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of this around here as well just very 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 softly okay so we've got a good a good cat eye shape there Um, right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a start on the middle of the eye. So we're going to get, we're going to jump, we're going to jump in really quickly. Okay, so what you need is um, I've got a cold grey one here. This is a Polychromos cold grey one. It's um, a very bluey grey, and it's a very pale bluey grey. Um, if you don't have um, this particular one just use the lightest grey that you've got um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the entire middle of the eye with this pencil okay so I'm going to start the top left and I'm going to use um, round strokes now you, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it on the screen but you want to try and get as smoother uh, lay down of the pencil as possible which is is, is quite tricky when you're using pastel mat um, but you you don't want to have any lines or anything like that in there so I tend to use like this little roundy motion with my pencil so it's it, you get an even surface or an even lay down of your pencils now where there are these little catch lights you need to leave those so you need to leave those out, make sure you isolate those highlighty bits. So that's really, really important, especially if you're using a smooth paper, because if you start to go over the top of your highlights and think, oh, I'll just put them in later, with coloured pencil, you're not going to be able to. Okay, so, um, you know, it's really important to isolate those catch lights. So you can see this is a really light grey. Now I'm using light pressure here again. If you use too dark a pressure, um, what can happen is, or too heavy a pressure, what can happen is your uh, the pigment will actually go a little bit too dark because you can get quite a lot of pigment out of these pencils. So just really, really nice light pressure. I'm just going to bring this catch light in here as well. You don't have to have your catch lights in the perfect position, but... Uh, and then again, just round, roundy circles. Doesn't matter if you bring in a little bit of that grey in the top here, because actually that's quite dark up there, and we will darken that up. Um, and we're actually going to go over the pupil area as well. So, so this is just, you know, Dead easy, just roundy circles, just filling in the whole of the middle of the eye. I'll leave a bit of a gap there where there's a bit of sort of pinky, pinky highlight and there's a little one there as well. Okay. So it's just one layer of the cold grey. Okay. 
and I've all my pencils are sharp um, and I always start with them or tend to sometimes start with them sharp um, but then I probably won't sharpen the majority of them again then you know I'll, I'll start with sharp pencils on a portrait for the eyes and then I don't normally sharpen them again um, but for eyes and the details and everything it's quite good to have sort of sharp pencils but you can see you know we're starting to get a well we're just filling the eye in basically now if you were drawing a cat's eyes that were a different colour, so maybe you've got sort of like yellowy coloured eyes or greeny coloured eyes or something like that, you would pick probably um, a pale creamy colour um, to do your f your first layer. So choosing the lightest colour that you can see is always a good, a good thing to do with coloured pencil because then you can start with that and then um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to match in with your... Uh, you know the darker colors so the, the the dominant color that you're going to be using so greens and yellows the creamy colors are going to work quite well okay and then I'm just going to bring it into this area here as well so the reason I've done this is to give us sort of like a nice first base to be able to then work our colors in okay um just started a piece and using cold pressed paper this is Natalie Waddle uh, I've just started a piece and using cold press paper and find it very challenging. I've now ordered hot press. Would you recommend? Oh, yes. Well, the cold press paper is going to be very um, uh, textured. So you're going to have a an actual, you're going to be able to see the texture of the paper. And, and actually, you can make some incredibly beautiful drawings on it. But you, you need to work with the texture of your um, paper rather than against it. So if you're trying to get really, really smooth transitions of, of pencil onto your cold press paper, you, you are going to be you're going to be battling with it. So using a hot press paper, which is a smooth, um, it's got a smooth surface that you will probably find a lot easier. OK, so, yes, I definitely would recommend um, the Fabriano Artistico. It's not a paper I tend to use purely because I don't really um, get on with the smoother papers, but um, I know a lot of artists do use it and it's 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 very well um, you know it, it is recommended so yeah definitely so here again I'm just sort of bringing out those little uh, catch light highlighty bits and I can even bring a couple in here as well where there's just that's the nice thing about the putty eraser you can just softly bring out little highlights and I tend to do this in all of my drawings and you know just use the putty eraser just to keep on bringing those highlighty bits out right so next we are going to use um, again it's the Faber Castell polychromos and it's the dark indigo okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, draw in the pupil area and I'm going to use really really soft pressure my paper that I'm using tends with the darker colors on the white they tend to be quite grainy so if you see sort of like quite a lot of grain going down on mine, that's why. If you're using a smoother paper, yours is going to seem an awful lot smoother. Um, but mine is going to look a bit softer and probably quite grainy. And that's normal for pastel mat. So I'm just going to very gently. Now, what I don't want to do, OK, is I don't want to, to um, go in with a harsh line and a harsh line and draw it in really hard okay so I don't want to do that um, let me just um, see if I can show you what I mean I'm just put, put a sketch book quickly and just see if I can show you what I mean um, just because it's always good to um, do that what not to do as well as what to do okay so um, if I've got my um, pupil here what I don't want to do is that's very that's very harsh isn't it but I don't want those really really harsh smooth lines because if I then want to start bleeding these out I will end up with quite a harsh line around it and almost like a halo-y type effect so I want to keep my lines really soft okay so when I'm coming in here, oops, what I'm doing is I am coming in, but I'm going really, really softly. So my um, 
my pressure is really soft and I'm keeping my edges fuzzy, if that makes sense. So if again I use this roundy stroke, those edges are going to look fuzzy and sort of soft. And that means that I can kind of add to those and sort of bring bits out and um, you kind of bleed it out and blend it out into the colour that I'm going to add in a little bit later. OK, now, if you look at your cat eye, there are some real um, there are some, quite a few pinky details in this pupil area. If you want to put those in, you, you can. I'm not going to. I might put a few in. But because I wanted to keep this so that people can can follow along just on like computer paper or the back of an envelope or whatever, um, it would be quite hard to kind of add all of those tiny weeny little details in. So I'm not really going to concentrate on those tiny ones. What I want is a um, a, a good cat eye that that looks you know really cool. Um, we have got. I guess we could bring a little bit in there. So there's a sort of like a squarey area here. Now, because I'm working on pastel matte, what I can do is I can actually move light over dark. Um, you know, I can put light colours over dark, whereas if you're working on a smoother paper, you're not going to be able to. But So you'll have to work this little bit of lighter colour in. So again, just really, really, really um, light pressure. Keep on going over those. Um... OK, and then I'm just going to bring my putty eraser in again and just pull out that little bit of a highlight in there and that little bit of a highlight in there. So just keeping those clear. So that's, um, yeah, that's looking OK. You know, for your first layers, that's all you need. OK. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to make a start on bringing in a little bit of colour around the cat's eye. Now, we started with a really light base. Um, uh, probably we will make a, let's have a look, just looking at these colours that I've got. I'm just going to get them all, oops, get them all out. Um, we've got all sorts of different blues in here, purples. So I think we're going to make a start with using the light cobalt turquoise and we're just going to bring in some of these little turquoisey areas into here. OK, so where we see the turquoisey bits, um, we're going to bring those areas in again, very, very lightly in over the top of that initial layer of the cold grey one. And again, using the roundy strokes, however, if there are any particular sort of like, I want to say texture, but it's not really texture in an eye, is it? You know, there will be some areas that are sort of like a little bit liney just because that is the, the pattern in the cat's eye. You can start to bring them in. So I'm just going to bring in this turquoisey colour. And when you start to sort of get a little bit closer to the pupil of the eye, um, you can kind of do bring your strokes in sort of from the centre out. And what that will help is it is almost like you're drawing on the surface of the cat's eye. If you can envisage that you're drawing on a, on a sphere, then it, very quickly you're going to find that your your piece is looking spherical. It's looking sort of 3D and, and round. So um, just bringing this in down here. Now, this isn't the, the final colour. You know, this colour that we're using now, we're going to mix in with other colours to kind of get those really nice bluey, bluey shades. OK. And then when, when we come down here, this, this area around here is much, much lighter. So I'm not going to bring any of this turquoisey colour into there. Um, I'm going to bring a little bit into here. And a little bit around here. So still using really, really, really light pressure. OK. Right. And then I'm going to use the sky blue. So you just want sort of like a, a nice um, pale blue. And I'm going to start to bring this in around the eye and kind of 
um, into some of these other areas. Now the shadowy bits, the darker bits, will bring them in a little bit later and there will be sort of like greys over the top of. Okay. So you can see how it, the the sky blue over the top of that, um, the turquoisey one is going to kind of, you're going to get some of the turquoise showing through and then you're also going to get um, just shades of this coming through and then a shade of the mixed coming through. So straight away you're starting to get you know some some different colors in there now we don't have to follow the photograph exactly um you know but uh, as long as we get the a gist of it and actually you know it's just a it's just a cat cat's eye i mean if you were drawing um a, you know a commission for somebody or something like that you'd kind of want to get your your colors in you know you'd want to get them spot on really um, and any sort of detail and stuff like that that the cat's got in, in its eye, you'd kind of want to get that. So if you bring these little detaily bits in very softly in the eye so that they kind of follow through in the layers and they show through in the layers, that's that's quite a good thing to do. Now, I really like using the polychromos for eyes because they are uh, they're a more sort of translucent colour. Um, with the more softer pencils, so like the light fast, like the luminance, those ones that tend to be a little bit more um, opaque, which means that they sort of have a better coverage. So using something that's a little bit more translucent, I can I can kind of see the layers underneath. And that's what I like when I'm doing eyes. I like that sort of lovely lightness of the colour to build very, very gradually rather than putting a big, thick um, layer of colour in. And that's why I like to use the really light pressure as well. And it just starts to emerge really gradually. Okay. So it's funny, I've done I've done this eye as a tutorial and I've done this eye as a workshop. And I'm sure every single time I've drawn it, it's been completely different how I've done it. <laughs> I don't think there's a set way of being able to, um, you know, follow a process. I should have... Uh, I should have the video running, shouldn't I? And just just set them off, that off, and then just sat and had a cup of tea. <laughs> um, right, so you can see that there's a nice a nice layer of colour um, starting to um, emerge here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring a little bit of the purple in. Um, and don't don't be scared if it all starts going, um, you know, a little bit dark and whatever. Don't be scared. Just keep going. Um, you know, I always think if something goes a little bit wrong, don't, doesn't matter. Um, you know, especially if it's something like this, it really, really doesn't matter. It's all a, it's all a learning curve. And if you get a bit of purple in the wrong place, well, you know, who, who cares? Nobody does. So I'm just bringing a bit of colour into this top bit here. Um, and then I'm going to just outline that little spot and then I'm going to come in here now I've got my hand resting on um, the glassine paper I don't know if you can see it this is glassine paper so it's acid free paper that comes with the pastel mat if you buy the pastel mat sheets um, and and that is quite a good it's always quite a good thing to have something underneath your hand um, and it's always good to have something that's acid free. If you start putting your hand on the paper, the oils from your skin are going to start to be transferred. It doesn't have a huge effect on coloured pencil, I have to say, apart from smudging. But if you were going to be, um, if you were drawing with graphite, you, you would find that you actually do end up with sort of marks oily marks and stuff um, and it's diff more difficult to get your graphite down so it's always a good idea to um, you know have something under your hand now I'm pulling this bit of purple in here I know this isn't purple here but we're going to go over the top of it and what I want to do is I actually want to take it into the pupil area as well so I'm going to put the purpley bits around here and then I'm going to drift that pencil very lightly you can see how it's sort of darkening up that bit there I'm just going to drift it very lightly into the pupil area as well so that um, they're all connected it all becomes one rather than like I was saying before you've got a harsh line um, there are some areas of the pupil where they are a little bit harder but not not many so I'm just going to 
first. Okay, so just bringing that in here as well and just sort of not really working on detail, but just it's just more about sort of colour, bringing colour in. Okay. So we don't want too much of the purple, but there's definitely a purple hue on this side of the eye. And you can see it's not, it isn't a tricky process at all. I do think cat eyes are, you know, when you when you start to work on them, I think they look spectacular right uh, really early on because of all of the lovely colours and everything that you put on and because they're such a, um, you know, a good shape. They're just, re they're just sort of oval, um, you know. So again, I'm just going to bring a little tiny bit of this purple in around the pupil area here. You can see I'm still using really, 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 oh, Vinny, will you stop moaning? Really, really, really light pressure. Um, just bringing that in there. All right, can I see any more purple? Just a little bit of purple down here. Okay, and then just bring a little bit of that into the um, pupil area as well. So you can see we're still we're still um, very early, very early days creating this. Right. So now what I'm going to do is um, I'm just thinking, oops, um, just that. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to bring one of the darker blues in. So this is the this is cobalt blue. Now I've got a pencil missing, which is the the one that's got reddish in the name I don't know where it is um, so I'll just kind of but it doesn't matter you can use any blues really so this is the cobalt blue that I'm going to use here and again I'm just going to start bringing in a little bit of this around the edge I'm really looking at my reference photo to kind of see where these areas of color are coming in now this might look a little bit bright to begin with uh, but we will kind of be knocking everything back um, very soon anyway um, and um, which will have an effect of sort of of um, making everything less bright. So it'll sort of not dull it, but it'll it'll take the brightness out of any any of the colours and then we can go back in again and brighten them up. So I'm just going to sort of very carefully and very, very gently just bring this blue in as well. So what you're what you're hoping to get is that they're, they're going to kind of start merging into each other, these colours. Um, um, we are going to do something in a minute where, where everything hopefully will start to blend and look an awful lot smoother. Um, I'm just going to use a little bit harder pressure around this bit of the catch light here where it's quite bright. And then I'm going to just use a little bit of this blue up into here. Again, you can see I went a little bit hard there and it's, you've kind of got a few little like liney bits. So try and keep your pressure really, really light. And again, we can just bring this brighter blue into the top of the pupil in there as well. And then we can just come round and sort of fan out from the pupil area. So you're fanning it out, so you're getting that sort of, you kind of are getting some lines coming out. Now, what I need to be very careful about is I don't lose the actual shape of the pupil. So just sort of come back in again and just make sure we've still got, not a straight line, but we've still got the area of that pupil in there because we don't want to end up with just one enormous pupil. Um, and you can see how nicely this, this cobalt blue then works with the purple and works with the other blues that we've got in there as well. So just nicely, nicely bringing that out and taking it into that pupil area as well. So we keep on getting that nice soft feel there. So there's a little bit of um, paleness at the bottom of the pupil here. Now, if you're using smooth paper, you need to be careful that you kind of keep that in. You need to sort of, again, isolate these areas of, of lightness. If you're using pastel mat, you can we'll be able to come in over the top with a lighter colour, so that's okay. And then we're just going to bring this down here. This, this eye's probably not going to look anything like the eye that I'm drawing. <laughs> just going to 
just going to wing it and just put any colour in there. <laughs> okay, so again, we've just got a little area down here that's a bit darker. Okay, and then we've got down here. Now you can see with the pastel mat, you really do get a beautiful, beautiful effect. Um, you know, very early on. Now, the pastel mat I'm using is the pastel mat board, which does tend to be that little bit um, smoother. Um, and I prefer that for my coloured pencils. I know quite a few um, other artists who are pastel artists prefer the, um, the, the pastel mat that is a little bit grittier. Um, sadly, you can't you can't choose. <laughs> you get what you're given, unfortunately. Um, and a lot of the time, it can be it can be a little bit frustrating. But I find the board, especially the white board, to be um, almost like a different product. Um, you know, it's it is my I think it is definitely my favourite surface to work on. I'd love drafting film, but I think pastel mat is is definitely my favourite surface. So that I've said it now. <laughs> But um, the the board is 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 fabulous because it is that little bit smoother. Um, so I'm just gonna come in here, just add a little bit more of this blue. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back into that pupil area and we're gonna make it darker. So can you see how we've got all of these sort of like little areas in here? It's not perfectly smooth. That's you can, you can almost see some pencil lines. That's really nice. I really like that because you that's the pattern that you're getting in the cat's eye anyway. So that's going to work really nicely. I'm just going to bring some of this around here as well. And then I'm going to get a mouthful of tea. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Let me just put a little bit more up here. That's Vinny again. It's not my stomach, honestly. <laughs> I could blame him. I could blame Vinny for everything, couldn't I? I could be sat here with a rumbling stomach, burping away, and I just blame it all on Vinny. He's not actually in the room at all, he's in the garden. <laughs> no, he is, he's definitely in the room. He's like my he's like my blooming shadow, is that dog? He's there all of the time. <laughs> right, good liking the look of that um so i'm hoping that everybody's still with me and still okay with uh, with what i'm doing i'm just going to grab a cup of what brand passed on that board i've just seen that it's um it's claire fontaine pastel mat so claire fontaine are the only um are the only manufacturers of pastel mat um no other manufacturer makes pastel mat vinny what are you doing oh my god are you stuck Oh, mad dog. <laughs> uh, where do I buy my pastel mat board? I buy it from either Jackson's or SAA um, in the UK. Right, so now I've got my dark indigo back again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to darken up this pupil area before I put any black in it. Now, we don't have to worry too much about the top of this eye because we're going to darken this off significantly. But... Um, I'm just going to use tiny, tiny circles with the stark indigo. I've increased my pressure um, so that I'm getting a little bit darker area. Can you par buy Clairefontaine in the US? You can. Um, now, I need to find out where the best place is. A lot of people buy from Jackson's in the UK because they ship globally and it's actually cheaper to buy from Jackson's in the UK and ship it out to the US. A lot of people say that it's actually cheaper um, than buying it in the US, which I know sounds crazy, but um, you know, um, so you, you definitely can buy it in the US, but um, a lot of people find it cheaper to buy it from the UK. And the board only comes in sheets, so um, you don't get it in pads. It just comes in the sheets. And it's a three, it's three millimetres. The, the thickness of the board is, is three millimetres. And what happens with the board is, and, and people tend to get sort of, they get a bit um, worried, is 
the board bends it's got a big bow in it <laughs> so and it's it, that that is down to um the moisture content the difference in moisture content between the backing and the um the surface area so um you know you just get a bit so all you have to do is just strap it down and i use show you oops i use these got pencil in my mouth i use these these faber castell tack it things i use those to, to tack my board down onto my drawing board and then it's flat and you don't have to put um you don't have to put tape around it uh, so that's quite good now i've lost my shape a little bit here so with, with me banging on about not not putting a big ring around it <laughs> i wish i had now <laughs> no i don't um so i'm just going to bring that down a little bit more and just darken that up a little bit so the reason i'm using blue this dark blue is because i want my black to be really really rich when i put it down over the top of it um, and if I was using just black, it would look a little bit flat. So that's why that's the reason why I'm using this dark blue over the top of it. So it's going down really nice and smoothly, actually. So it's starting to darken that up a bit. And again, using these roundy strokes so that it stays sort of, you know, spherical. Just bring that down here a bit. Like I say, we're going to darken up this area here anyway, so. I know people say that colour pencils are really slow and they are, they are a really slow medium, but I tell you what, they are a brilliant medium for just getting completely lost. Um, not lost in your drawing and not being able to <laughs> work out what you're doing, but completely lost in your mind. So they're really, really good for uh, relaxation and mindfulness and all of that type of stuff. Um, because you just get you just get completely immersed in it. And because it takes, you know, quite a long time, um, you can just, you can, well, you can lose hours and hours and hours. And because you're concentrating, your hands are, your hands are busy. Your mind is kind of busy, but you can just, you know, forget about all the stresses and worries and everything in life. It's uh, it's a fantastic medium for that type of thing. And I, I guess that's why the, the, the colouring books are so popular, you know, just sort of colouring, colouring in again. It's a really, really good form of mindfulness. Okay, so again, I'm just bringing out this little bit round here. Right, so now what I'm going to do is put my brave pants on and I'm going to kind of burnish, very lightly burnish over the top of the hole of the eye. Now, I've got Faber-Castell white and I've got a Museum Aquarelle white. Um, you can, I would... I would recommend in early burnishing, so if you're going to be burnishing in between layers, I would recommend you don't use polychromos white. It has almost like a, um, a way of resisting other colours that go on the top of it. So it's fine for sort of like putting into highlight areas where you want to keep completely clean. But if I was to go over all of this with the polychromos white, I'd then I'd be able to, but it would be harder to then get the colours back over the top. So what you, you're better off doing is using something like I've got here, the Museum Aquarelle, or using something like, I haven't got a white one here actually, something like a white, um, a white luminance, um, even a, a Prisma, I'm saying even, Prismas are brilliant pencils, a Prisma white. So something that you're going to be able to layer over and that isn't going to resist any colour that's going to go down on the top of it. And so that's the reason I'm not using the um polychromos white so i'm going to use the uh this is the museum aquarelle white okay and i am going to come in like i say my brave pants are firmly hitched up and i'm just going to come in and just roundy circles over the top of i'm going to miss out these um highlighted bits again but roundy circles over the top of 
all of the colour that I've put down. But I'm going to miss out the pupil area. Okay. Now I'm using light pressure, but you, if you're using um, smooth paper, you might find that you want to just to have a little bit more pressure. So if you're putting the pressure down and it's not doing anything, just put a little bit more pressure onto your pencil. And what you should see is that it starts to blend everything underneath it. And it starts to go smooth. Um, now this is something that I do just, just really with eyes like this or eyes that are maybe a little bit bigger than in portrait size. Um, because it's a really nice, quick way of getting that lovely smoothness. I'm going to come up here as well and just smooth out that. But over the blue, it will make it look a little bit lighter. You know, I mean, the the um, your color theory will apply. So if you apply white to anything, it's just going to it's going to make it lighter, isn't it? So again, I'm kind of roundy, but kind of still bringing bringing out these strokes from the outside. And I'm going to bring it right down to the edge down here. And what it will do is it will it will drag the color as well. So if you've kind of got color that hasn't quite reached the edges, it will sort of pull that that the pigment in and drag it with it. Okay. So what you should be finding is that this eye is starting to become really quite nice and smooth. Um, so Evie's just sent me a question. If you buy pastel matting sheets, do you have to cut it to size yourself? Yes, you do. Um, it comes in sheets of, I tend to buy the, well, you can buy it in all sorts of sheet sizes. I tend to buy the 50 by 70 centimetre, but you can buy 100 by 70 centimetre if you want. Um, so I buy the 50 by 70, which means I can get four good proper sheets um, out of that. Um, you know, good, good, proper sort of drawing sized uh, pieces of paper, pieces of card. Now, I would hide. I have cut pastel mat board with scissors. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. So my hands were crippled at the end. <laughs> they were all red and sore and bleeding. No, they weren't bleeding, but um, I would not recommend you cut the pastel mat board with scissors because it's really tough. So I would definitely say get yourself a, um, a metal ruler. So I've got this... I once, I think it was at school or college or something, and I, and I cut a piece of board with a scalpel and I kind of cut half, half the side of my finger off or the top of my thumb off or something. And every time now I sort of have to cut something, I have these flashbacks of, of my, pen, my, my finger being sliced into. So I would highly, highly recommend you get yourself a, um, a metal ruler. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, and then a good, like a Stanley knife or something like that with a good strong blade. And then you can just um, cut it up. And what I do is I have one of those cutting mat things, you know, the green ones with the graph papery type stuff on. Um, and what I do, what I've done is I've actually marked on the cutting mat what a half sheet looks like. So I can just line my pastel mat board up between two lines and then cut it. And then I've put more marks on for the quarter sheet. So I don't have to measure anything. It's really good. <laughs> so um, anyway, so we've, we've, got, we've got quite a good... Uh, um, oh, I'm just reading some of the, um, some of the questions actually. A Prisma color, colorless blender would be brilliant for this, yes. Um, anything that's gonna be sort of like quite nice and soft, but not resist anything going over the top of it okay so we've got a really nice feeling of um, glassiness coming in here and what I want to do now is I want to bring the black in now I'm using mostly polychromos for this but you can use you know whatever whatever colors you've got and they will they will work nicely but like I said I quite like the translucency that the um, the polys give me oh yes I've just yes yes it would it would Evie. I've just I've just replied to that one. <laughs> I'm ahead of you. <laughs> um, yeah, the Prisma Color bl Colors Blender is a, is a good one. Um, and also um, the other one as well is the Caran d'Ache Colorless Blender. So that's this is a bit grubby looking. It's in a it's in a um, a pencil extender. But this is another one that would be good. The white's quite nice because it kind of just knocks everything back a little bit. So I'm just coming in here now with the black. And again, I'm going to try and keep my edges a little bit fuzzy and I'm just going to come in again I'm using 
quite strong pressure now. Um, and I'm just going to bring it in over the top of that pupil area to make it really dark. And what's really nice is that it's kind of it's going over the top of that um, dark indigo and it's giving us this really nice rich black. Now you could use something like a um, light fast nightshade or something like that to give sort of like almost like a really deep purpley black. You know, that's that's kind of your preference, really. You, you can do what you like with that. Um, but you're looking for this really, really nice, rich black rather than a flat black. And you can use all sorts of different colours under your blacks. Can you cut past them up with a guillotine? I would imagine you can. Yeah, if you've got something like a mount cutter or something like that, it's a it's a similar um, it's a similar width, similar width, similar weight to sort of mount mount board, mat board, that type of stuff. So yeah, definitely. But I would, if you're cutting it yourself, I definitely recommend getting that metal ruler because you don't want to be. Um, and it's expensive paper. You don't want blood all over it. <laughs> right, Vincent, what are you doing now? He's going to throw himself on the floor now, I think. <gasps> no, not the pig. Oh, God, I've left the pig on the floor. The squeaky pig. He might pick that up. I'm hoping he won't. <sighs> that's what happened on one of my other live streams. He picked the squeaky pig up and that's all they could hear at the end of it was Vincent running around with the squeaky pig. Right, OK, so we've got that eye in there. <sighs> and then what we could do, if you've got... Um, if, you've, if you're using pastel mat or you've got a paper that you can kind of get a little bit of light over the top of, what we can do is we can just bring a little tiny bit of um, light into this. So I'm using my um, cold grey one here and I'm just bringing a tiny weeny little bit of light. I'm not trying to get white light over dark. I'm just trying to sort of tint this um, the pupil a little bit so there's almost like a tiny bit of light coming in there and then I'm just gonna this what this cold grey one is a really good one for blending as well and um, you know doing your um, burnishing right okay so we need to start darkening up around here now so I'm gonna use what colors have we got Oh, I've got this one as well. So I've got the um, Indanthrin blue as well, which I think will be... This is probably going to be replacing the, the reddish one. The, I don't, can't remember what it was called now. Um, so I'm just going to bring a little bit of this in. This is quite nice because it's sort of a purpley blue as well, so it'll fit nicely with the purples. And then just bring it again, sort of starting to bring a few of these little sort of details into play. You don't have to go, well, if you want to go mad, you can go as mad as you like, but you don't have to. You know, just a few sort of like little um, little lines will show how the eye is working. And I guess we're wanting to keep it relatively simple, but, um, you know, if you want to really go for it, and add a ton of detail then um, you know you can and it's quite it's much much easier to get that lovely light detail in once you've got a few layers in there and once it's sort of burnished a bit because you've got a much slicker surface to work on then but your pencils will still blend nicely and that's one of the things that I really love about pastel mat as well is the fact that you know you can you can get some really really amazing details and depth but you can also use your paper to work for you you know so if you've got areas of something that you're drawing that's that's got a texture to it you can kind of let the paper do do the work for you okay so just bringing this out here as well and then i think we need to get some of that sky blue back in here again and probably a 
bit of that cold grey four. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of the sky blue in here. Now it's funny, you know, when we first put that layer of um, cold grey one down, I was thinking, oh, blimey, that's dark. But actually, once you start to get all of your colour and everything in, you'll realise that what you thought was a really, really pale colour half of the time is actually really quite dark. Um, right, this is the cold grey four that I'm going to be using now. So the polychromos have a really, really great range of greys, a really great range of greys. Um, they have cold greys from one to six and they have warm greys from one to six. Um, I, I per well, th there's some other greys as well in the other manufacturers that are good, but personally, I think the polychromos range of greys are perfect. They're spectac spectacular. And I use the greys a lot. Um, you know, I use them for sort of um, helping to burnish in sort of black fur, that type of stuff. They're, they're a really, really useful, useful pencil to have. Um, you know, so if you were going to be buying single pencils, I would definitely recommend getting the whole range of the greys from the Polychromos range. Um, they're just, they're just brilliant. Um, and I also like to use the cold, the cooler and the warm colours together as well. I think that they make a really nice combination. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna come in here um, and I'm gonna just bring in a little bit of a, an extra highlighty bit. So I'm not rubbing anything out, I'm just adding sort of little bits of highlight in here and a little bit of lighter color. We can actually do that with the white, I think. Um, and I'm going to use the White Museum Aquarelle again just to come in and just burnish over this area here. So where I've put the grey in. I should have put that in before really but it doesn't matter. So I want to sort of smooth that out so it's all like a nice, nice transition. going to come in here and just whiz over those bits that I've just put in. Good, okay. Right, and then I'm going to, I think, I think I'm going to use that turquoisey colour again just down in here. Now you might find that when you put this turquoisey colour down, you want to then go back in again and um, and just uh, um, you know run your white back over it, or you might feel that actually it's fine as it is, and that that'll be sort of personal to you really, uh, you know, as to how everything's gone down. So I'm now going to use the cobalt blue again. No, I'm not. I'm going to use the the middle thalio blue. Don't know whether that yes thalio blue. Um, and um, I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit more colour into here. And it's all about layering, building colour, um, smoothing off, you know, rather than trying to go straight in with detail, you're much better just sort of blocking in colours, getting the, the feel of the um, whatever it is that you're drawing. Uh, you know, rather than trying to put details in straight away, because if, if you try and put details in straight away, you, you're going to end up with something that doesn't have much depth, you know, because you haven't got all of the other bits underneath it. You haven't got those tonal values underneath it. OK, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit more into here. So some, some lines down this side here, a little bit around here. And then just go up and round here. Could you explain the difference of the drawing surface between pastel light board and pastel light sheets? There shouldn't be a difference. They should be identical. Um, but uh, I have found that the, the board is a little bit smoother. It just feels smoother to the touch. Um, pastel mat has, um, it's a cellulose fibre surface 
uh, which means that it's, oh, I'm using the, uh, yeah, indanthrin blue now. I'm just going to pull a little bit more dark into here. So it's made with, um, is that, no slippers wagging her tail now. Uh, it, yeah, it's made with cellulose fibres. So uh, I think it's probably very difficult to get some, to get a really consistent surface all of the time. So sometimes you get a smoother piece of pastel mat which I prefer and sometimes you get one that is quite gritty um, and it's I think it's the gritty surfaces that really do put people off um, I, I like to work with a much smoother surface but I don't but when I say smoother it's not like a smooth paper it's still got quite a lot of um, texture in it okay so I'm just going to round this edge off here and then I want to start bringing in a bit of a shadow in at that top bit up there so what I'm hoping is we're nearly an hour, an hour in. What I'm hoping is that we're going to get both eyes pretty much done. Um, and then if you want to bring the fur and everything in round them, you can do. So I'm just bring a little bit more of that in there. Right. No, you're not going to be crying, Vincent. No, no. And then I'm just going to bring a bit more of the purple in. It. And then bring the purple in here as well. Okay, and then I'm going to use the white again just to gently smooth all of that over. That's it. Come, come and sit down. Come on. Good boy. So I'm going to ring one of the children and come in to get the dog okay right so again let's just a little bit harder pressure in these areas where it's a bit lighter Uh, am I familiar with luminance silver grey looks identical to chrome? Yes, yeah, absolutely. The luminance greys are beautiful, um, and yeah, if, you know, if you've got that, I'd, I, that would be a good substitute, definitely. Like I say, they're a little bit more opaque, so that you're, um, it's about what you're going to be able to sort of see through the layers, basically. But um, the luminance pencils are beautiful. I tend to use the polychromos for my eyes. I don't tend to use other makes of pencil really in eyes, um, just because I've kind of found a, you know, a recipe that works for me, I guess. Right, so what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna bring in some dark color up onto the top here. Um, and I'm gonna very gradually and gently bring in the Payne's Gray up on this top bit here. So this is this is quite scary is um, bringing in shadow and dark. And, um, you know, actually, quite a lot of the time you might bring this in sort of quite quite early on. But the darkest part of this eye is the pupil area. And that's we kind of have brought that in straight away. So this shadow up here, um, I find bringing shadows in and darkening things up gradually is the best thing for me because it, it, it is a bit scary. You can't just you can't just whack in a load of color um, and expect it to be perfect straight away. So I like to kind of build that color up gradually. So I'm using really light pressure. I'm using this Payne's Gray, which is a bluey gray, very dark bluey gray. And, and I'm just bringing it in over the top of the eye. Um, and it's it's so important to get your shadows right. It really is important to get your shadows, um, you know, because that's what's going to make everything look really realistic. Um, if you're doing a portrait and you have got sort of quite a dark drawing, a dark photograph, and you decide that you're going to, you know, you, we all get these photos where you can't see the eyes of the animal and all of that type of stuff. 
Um, if you decide you want to change the eyes and give them a load of detail and everything, you've got to be really, really careful not to change the lighting too much. So you're still going to have to bring a load of that shadow in because if you brighten eyes up and change the shadows, um, it kind of changes the whole lighting of the whole piece. So you've just got to be really, really careful. Right, so just bringing this down in here. But getting these, you know, getting your darks dark and your lights light is really, really important. Just bring that down into there. Again, I'm going to sort of smooth all of that off in a second. And the other thing as well is, you know, when you bring your pencil in, when you first sort of start drawing with the, with the pencil on the paper and it looks really gritty and horrible, you've kind of got to understand why it looks like that why is it looking really gritty and horrible um you know and the reason is because of the tooth of the paper uh so your your pencil is kind of skimming over um you know the little toothy bits of the paper um and you end up with this sort of grainy grainy look because you've got the tooth of the paper coming through um but as you add more color um it's uh and and you you know you start sort of uh, smoothing it and burnishing it and everything and then that all disappears um i have a set of prisma colors how are the polychromos different oh they're very different so the polychromos are um well all pencils have got an element of wax and oil in them polychromos are more oil based than wax they're a hard pencil so they keep their point very uh, easily um and they're really good for detail Prismas are very soft. They're very waxy pencils and they're very soft. So kind of doing those really tiny details and building very light layers up um, is a little bit more challenging, I would say, with Prismas um, than it is with the Polychromos. But they're, you know, they're very good pencils. The, the Prismas have got the most fantastic colour range. And I find that they're really, really good for um, people portraits, you know, drawing skin and everything because of their softness. You know, you can get that lovely blending with them. Um, so, um, but a lot of people use Prismas. They, you know, they are a really, really good pencil. But the, the Polychromos are much harder. Okay, so I'm just bringing that area in there. And then we're just going to darken this area here up as well. Let's bring a bit more dark into this. Again, sort of visualising that sort of round spherical shape I'm not going to town with details I'm just trying to get these shadows in so we can sort of really see how you know we can get the details in quite quickly and do quite a nice job relatively quickly right so I'm going to go back in again with the oh goodness Hang on a sec, Flipsy. there's pencils all over the floor I'm going to go back in with the white uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go in with the grey, the warm grey one, and I'm going to smooth the grey out. And that top bit there. And again, coming down here. And this is what kind of way, this is all about the layering, you know, so you smooth it out, you put your colour in, you smooth it out, you put some more colour in, you smooth it out, you put some more colour in. You know, that's what the layering is all about, is all about getting all of those lovely colours in. Um, you know, so it looks, looks really nice and realistic. So again, just sort of roundy strokes. Uh, Cordy, if you were to draw these cat eyes on drafting film, would the results be really different? Which one is easier to work on? What subjects are better? Well, that's a very interesting question. So if you were to draw these on drafting film, you would have to use a different um, approach. So drafting film doesn't really blend very well at all <laughs> so if you did what i've just done here with sort of putting the colors in and then going over with the top of the white it's not going to work so what you have to do with your drafting film is you have to really plan how you're going to use your colors so it's a 
I, I guess a little bit more like using a, um, a a smooth paper in the fact that you've got to kind of plan where your highlights or your lighter bits are. Um, but um, also plan how you're going to lay that colour down. So where I'm sort of using these nice roundy strokes and they're all sort of quite quite easily blending into each other, that wouldn't happen with the drafting film and you would end up with lines on your um, drawing quite easily. Um, so it's it's important to really plan your, you know, how you're putting your pencils down. But it's also um, important to plan um, the how the pressure that you're using as well. And the thing the the thing with drafting film is once you kind of get going with your pressure, you, you kind of need to keep going. It's um, it's like one of those, you know, if you stop and then you've got to find the same pressure, you can kind of end up with uneven. It can look a little bit uneven. And that's why I prefer to do smooth surfaces on pastel mat and um, textured surfaces or textured textured fur on the drafting film, because you can get loads and loads of texture on the drafting film you know using sort of like your eraser and your knife and all of that type of stuff whereas pastel mat is brilliant for getting a smooth finish so i'm just coming back over here again the white's definitely a better a better bet than that warm gray the cold gray was so yeah i tend to if i've got something with a lot of texture you know some, some really lovely textured fur I would tend to to choose the drafting film over the pastel mat but if I've got something smooth or maybe I've got like a horse with a bridle or something like that I would choose to to use the uh, pastel mat because it's it's easier to get a smooth transition of color okay right and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this the turquoisey one this is the uh, light cobalt turquoise and I'm just going to sort of bring that in here and then just bring it in over the top of that little bit there and then a little bit around there and then we can just bring it in on there as well and underneath there And then, I mean, we could go on forever, really. This is the cobalt blue again. Um, I want to make a start on that second eye, really. We can just, we could go forever. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to use a little bit of the black, which is, which is broken because I dropped it on the floor, but it'll be fine. And then just bring that round. Vinny that around in here and then this top bit here is quite dark oops just darken that off even more oops Good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, just because these are the only colours we've got, I'm going to use a little tiny bit of the purple um, in this area here. So really, really lightly, you do not want a bright purple bit here. And then I'm going to use the, the cold grey one over the top of it. I'm going to use a touch of the um, the dark indigo. Just darken up these bits here. And then just bring a little tiny touch of that in over the top. Should be pinky really, but doesn't matter, does it? And then that cold grey one again. And then just a tiny bit of the black just to um, just to 
kind of darken that up there. Um, and then I think I use the dark indigo. It's down around here. Into the bottom bit of this eye and then we will move on to the second one. And just bring in a little bit of colour down into this bottom bit. You can go forever, you know, with what you're doing. Uh, talking about soft pencils, I don't want drawing pencils softer than Prisma Colours. Uh, yes, I, in my opinion, they are softer than Prismas. Um, the Derwent drawings, they've got a much thicker core as well. So um, they're, they're really, really good for sort of wildlife and landscapes and that type of stuff. Um, they're, they're lovely, lovely pencils. Right. Okie dokes. So I'm going to move on to the second eye, which is slightly different. Let's hope we can all see it. Hold on, let me just check if everything is... Right, so I'm going to move, shift the dog over a little bit and I'm going to move on to the second eye and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the second eye. So I'm going to bring in the uh, a little bit of the Payne's Grey. Um, actually, I'm not going to use the Payne's Grey, I'm going to use the um, Dark Indigo. And I'm just going to outline that I'm going to plug my phone in because it's about to die so I can read your questions um, right so let's just put a little bit of this up here let's bring that in there so again really nice soft pressure this is where I've got to remember the um, <laughs> The, uh, the order and what I used before, which it doesn't really matter if you don't, you know, you could use completely different colours for this eye and still get a similar result. Right, so I'm just going to bring in this bit down here. This bit actually has got a darker ring around it than the, um, than the left eye. But can you see what I mean about the, the eye just being just just more simpler in shape? I'm not saying it's simple to draw, but being more simple in shape, you don't have to really worry about those, um, you know, weird um, eyelids. All right, that's not very spherical, does it? It'd be fine. It'd be all right. Right, good, okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same as what we did before and I'm gonna go over the entire surface with the cold gray one. Okay. So again, sort of these round strokes, N not hard, um, but just getting some, some sort of a, a coverage in there and going over into the um, pupil area as well. Uh, that's that. I mean, if you wanted to, you could you could even just lessen your pressure very slightly as you come to the edges of the eye. Um, but because it's such a light layer anyway, it's not really going to make a big difference. And then let's go over the top of that pupil again. Let's make sure we keep those little highlighted bits. There's more highlighted bits in this one. Make sure we keep those highlighted bits free. Okay. So I mentioned on Instagram a couple of days ago actually that I'm thinking of doing like a bit of a series. So almost going live every, once a week for a specific reason on um, YouTube. Um, and kind of what I was going to do was do a spaniel ear. 
but do it weekly so you kind of do a little bit each week um and there seem to be quite a few people that would would be interested in that so um you know if you're if you're interested in something like that you know do let me know so i've got loads of pictures of spaniel ears that i've taken and spaniel ears seem to be the one thing that you know many many artists find really hard to do um and they are really hard <laughs> they're really really hard um but uh you know i thought i thought it'd be quite quite nice if i did sort of like a, a weekly a weekly thing um what type of projector do i use for tracing so i have a it's an autograph inspire 1000 just grab some more tea but they don't make them anymore so um you know it I think if you if you purchase something that's got good lumens so it's got good good light and it's got good resolution um but a lot of people have started to use the um camera lucida app which apparently has got some really really good feedback so this is the um light cobalt turquoise that i'm using here so just bringing the turquoise areas in where we can kind of see them So sort of all kind of all around here and then we'll bring some of that lighter blue in there as well okay it's coming in here so again using that nice roundy nice roundy strokes and then coming up it's a bit turquoisey around here as well. Just popping that in there. Okay, and then I'm going to bring the sky blue in. Again, this is a bit grey down here. We can put a bit of grey in there, but then I'm just going to bring this sky blue in. Oh, I think before I put the pupil in, didn't I? I've, I've gone wrong already. <laughs> So it just goes to show you can do anything you want. It doesn't have to be in a particular order. <laughs> and it also goes to show that I never script anything or practice beforehand. <laughs> and I'm not following a tutorial. Um, in fact, let's do that now. Let's just put some of that dark, um, dark indigo in now. Uh, what realistic wildlife art... Uh, oh, for realistic wildlife art, what paper pencils would you recommend if you cannot get pastel mat? Um... I well anything anything um you know different artists use different papers so you'll find some using the um the hot press papers some using the bristol vellums some using the really smooth papers um I really like drafting film for wildlife because um there seems to be you know quite a lot of texture in sort of big cats and stuff like that um but uh you know anything that you can get your get hold of um, and then make sure that you work with the paper rather than against it you know so if you're working on a smooth paper just make sure that you're um, you know you, you isolate all of your highlights beforehand rather than sort of battling to try and get your highlights in if you're drawing big cats and they've got um, you know big whiskers with the big cats they tend to have like quite wide whiskers so you could almost get those in quite early on or at least you could draw around them you know that's what's really important with the hot press papers the smooth papers is to really isolate your highlights because you can't get the light over the top of the dark okay so let's just oops keep that clean and keep that clean That's not looking so bad it's a little bit rough rough and ready but it's all right good okay uh so we go back to the sky blue and i'm just going to bring some of that into here again and down to this bottom bit Again, being you know sort of really nice light pressure could do with some an even more turquoisey pencil really but it'd be fine 
um, really nice light pressure all the way through so I haven't really used hard pressure at all apart from maybe when I did the um, the, the pupil when I was putting the black in um, you know but you you want to be you want to be really keeping your pressure lovely and and soft even with your you know your uh, smoother papers okay and then let's just sort of fan it out a little bit so we get that the feeling of the eye So it's almost like you're just sort of blocking all your colour in, you're whacking all of the colour in, getting it all in and sort of like in the right places. And then you're going for the, you know, the smoothing. Um, I think that works really, really well on an eye like this. Um, and, a, a, you know, for, for cat eyes, I um, usually you'd be drawing something smaller than this anyway. But um, if you were drawing a cat um, a portrait, you know, you could do a very similar thing as in sort of getting all of the sort of colours in very early um, and then going over and burnishing and smoothing. Right, so I'm just going to use the putty eraser again just to do a little bit more highlight in there. A bit of a highlight in there. Highlighted bits there, and I can just sort of dab out a little bit down here as well. Okay, right, so um, I'm going to bring the purple in. This one doesn't have as much purple as the other eye, but I'm just going to bring the purple in on this side. And again, just really gently, just where you can kind of see those purpley bits. If you're seeing different colour to me, then you you know you use what you want to use, um, you know. And if you want to put more detail and everything in, then do honestly do. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to town with detail on this. I just want to sort of show, you know, a, a relatively quick and easy way of of creating the the cat's eyes. Um, you know, without having to be concentrating massively on on details, but. Um, you know, it'd be nice to see some of the uh, the ones that you do that, that are going to be more detailed. The amount of vinnies that I've seen have, has just been un unbelievable. It really has. It's been so lovely seeing my weird boy <laughs> popping up on the screen all of the time. It's just fab. Honestly, it's so nice. Uh, right, so what colour have we got now? I'll use the cobalt blue, I think. Um, this one's got a little bit more blue on this side. So again, nice soft pressure. We can come into the pupillary area. We can come into and over the top of the purple. So what will happen is hopefully it will start to sort of blend into each other. I can start to bring a little bit more down from here. I mean, you could really, really have an, a huge amount of fun with this sort of, you know, with this sort of um, uh, thing. You can bring all sorts of different colours in. Um, you know, you don't have to just stick with what's on the photograph. I always think it'd be really nice to do like a rainbow um, something and kind of edit it in Photoshop so that, um, you know, it's like a horse or something with a that's rainbow coloured. I thought that might be quite a, a nice idea to do. So I'm just going to bring into here again. So you can see we, it's almost like we make a really, really soft version of the final thing. Um, and I know I'm using a, a, you know, a textured paper, so it, it, it kind of will look probably a little bit different to yours. But it will still work the same way. Um, the layering will still work in the same way. Yours will probably look smoother than mine um, for more of the time. Okay, so... I've got that. Is that gone the wrong? Is that gone a bit? I'm sitting back now. I'm thinking. Have I got that the wrong the wrong shape? Probably. <laughs> it's a good job. This isn't a commission. <laughs> really, I'm, re I'm really sorry. I've drawn your cat, but the eyes are the wrong shape. I do apologise. No, 
I'm usually very, very, very careful with my commissions and make sure that they are spot on. I've still got the lovely Ryan that I'm drawing at the moment, the Black Labrador. So I started on his neck last night whilst watching. What did I watch? I watched Sunshine on Leith and then I watched... Um, what did I watch? Oh, I think I started to watch Hairspray. So I've been doing a lot of singing recently, which has been very nice. I do love a bit of the proclaimers, I have to say. <laughs> going so into this corner here and then just starting to build up this bit of the um, the shade along here. Even though it's a bit more grey, I'm still going to bring in this bit of the cobalt blue into here. Just a tiny weeny touch into there. And then I'm just going to kind of circle, circle these. Give that a bit of a circle. And bring some up into here. Okay. And then I need to bring some more of this blue down into here. And then I think what we'll do is we'll bring the white in again. Well, for the first time in this piece and just and burnish it. Okay, let's just bring a bit more of that in. more here, it's a bit darker area here. So that it's not going to look exactly the same as the um, photograph but it's going to have a nice look and feel. And plus I want this to be kind of you know accessible for, for anybody you know who wants to do it whether it's your first drawing or you know you've been drawing for a long time. Right so let's go back in with the, the dark indigo and let's just darken up this pupil area. So we've got little tiny weeny um, pencil strokes. Now if you're, I should be telling you this anyway, shouldn't I? I should have told you ages ago. If you're using hot press paper or you're using smooth paper, you are better off carrying on sharpening your pencils. You know, you will be better using a sharp pencil on the smooth paper than than what I'm doing. Um, so I mine were sharp to begin with and I haven't sharpened them since. So... Um, you know, but on the on the smoother paper, you probably will find it a bit easier if you're using a, a sharp pencil. So this pupil's got like a big shape in it, but again, I'm not that bothered about sort of getting all of that detail in it on this one. But if you want to sort of get all of that detail in, you can. I'm aiming for just something nice and smooth again, just sort of the woolly edges, um, you know, so it's not too sharp around there. Um, that's a bit of a there, isn't it? That's that and up into here. Um, Art and Diamonds with Eskies asks, will you please do fine fluffy white dog here at hair? <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> um, yeah, you see, so what, what, thinking what's fine fluffy white hair probably um like a cat or something like that i did that little rabbit and i've got a little rabbit that i did on um i've got as a as a um, tutorial on patreon that was really really fun to do and i tell you what the the um the ones i'm seeing that people have done are better than mine <laughs> Um, they're brilliant they're absolutely brilliant I keep seeing these little fluffy bunnies cropping up and they're absolutely fantastic I'm like oh my god <laughs> they're just brilliant um, you know uh, oh, it's so nice I, it is so so nice to see um, you know when you when you do tutorials to see how, you know people doing them and sharing them it was something that I, I wasn't sure how I'd how I'd feel actually when I um, I'm coming with the white museum aquarelle now and I'm just going to go very gently over the top of it but I'm not going to go over the pupil so when I first started doing tutorials I, I must admit I did wonder how I would feel when one of my drawings was then kind of replicated if if you like because that's that's what happens um and um and actually it, you know I, it was fantastic and half of the time 
you know, something pops up on social media and you're like, oh gosh, somebody shared my picture, that's nice. And then you realise it's not yours and somebody else has done it. And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's so lovely seeing people working on um, on the tutorials and stuff. But um, yeah, I will. Uh, I have to think of a good subject to do for something white and fluffy. I, I tend to find the white fluffy things are... Um, are quite good on um, on drafting film because you can get your your slice tool and everything in there, which is um, which is really good, you know. And you can get all of that sort of really really good fluffy fluffy hair, um, and you can get your eraser and everything in there as well. So it uh, it does work very well. Right, so let's come in in here. And come in here. Okay. So this museum mackerel, I must say, is doing quite a good job of um, of blending. And like I say, if I use the polychromos, uh, it it would it would kind of have a. Um, it would resist when you tried to put anything back over the top you'd still be able to do it but it would it would just feel a little bit funny and sometimes it can go a bit grainy as well which is weird you can get these sort of like little sort of spots there it's um it's it's odd okay right okay so let's now look at using that middle phthalo blue um We'll start to bring this in here. So you've got quite a slick surface that we're working on now. So you can start to bring in a few of these little sort of weird little... They're not... Well, maybe our veins, I don't know, but the sort of little shapes and everything on the edges down here. I'm just going to bring a little bit of this thalo blue down here as well. And then I want to need to bring some darker, darker colour in there too. And then come up to here. And bring a little bit in there as well, but that needs to be sort of, again, that needs to be more of a grey colour really. up there as well because this bringing the color up here even though we're going to put gray and stuff in is just going to aid um the um the depth of the piece it's, it's always quite nice to get color in just bring a little bit over that as well all right and then let's go with the cobalt blue Again, just sort of gently bringing that in. Now I'm not being oh, I'm not being overly careful about where I'm putting stuff, but um, you know, if you want to take much more care and really go to to town with the detail, then you know, you've got the image there, you've got you've got everything there to be able to do it. What I really like about this piece is that, you know, you can have somebody using colour pencil for the first time um, and create something that looks really, really spectacular. Um, you know, just by understanding how, you know, you can add layers of colour to create something that looks, you know, like a cat's eye. Um, and what's lovely about that is it kind of spurs, spurs you on then to do more and you want to do more. Um, working with colour as well so you know it's all very well doing dogs and horses and stuff like that um, but working with something that's a really bright colour it's it's really nice you know so when you've got something that's got lovely eyes like this it's so nice when I did the um, I did a Laura Keat you know really really bright colours um, you know completely different to you know what I'd done before um, you know, and using bright reds and bright greens and bright yellows, it's fantastic. 
Um, it's not, um, you know, you tend to work a lot with sort of chestnuts, browns, reds, oranges, you know, greys, that type of thing for um, for animal art. So, uh, although saying that, my my plant labrador's got bright yellow in it and, and pink in it, so I'm completely talking rubbish. <laughs> I do like to bring in, well, I bring in colours that I see, I guess. It's not, it's not that I want to bring in a shock element or anything like that, because when you look at my pieces, you don't go, oh, God, look at that pink dog. But the pink just kind of helps. You know, if I see a bit of pink and it's reflected somewhere, then I'll, you know, I'll use it. Um, right, let's just bring a little bit more down in here. OK, so we've got just under half an hour. Not that I'm rushing you or anything like that, but uh, it'd be quite nice to get this. Um, can you use a blending pencil for burnishing? Uh, yes, you can use a blending pencil for burnishing. Let's have a quick look at it, actually. So I've got I've got a blending pencil here. Um, this is a this is the um, oh, is this a burn or oh, it's colourless blender? They call it the it's the Caran d'Ache colourless blender. So if I use this here over the top, it basically has the same effect as the white, kind of. Um, but it doesn't it doesn't add the sort of the the white glassiness so yes you can use something like that you know very easily they i would say the caran d'ache colorless blenders are some of the best um but most of the brands make them um i tend to just use them for projects like this where the eyes are quite big um you know and i don't really burnish a lot of my work either i tend to use my well I, I guess I probably do burnish actually um, because I work light over dark so you know I, I, I guess I am doing a light burnish but not you know like some some artists who work on hot press paper and they burnish they're like properly going for it um, you know on your sort of final layers really really you know getting everything in getting it all smoothed off which is something that I don't do um, you know but uh, there's there's ways and means of doing everything isn't there you know, I mean, you only have to look at my work and then you look at somebody else who uses the same products as me, same paper as me and draws the same subjects as me. And our work is completely different, you know, and that's because we're two completely different people. Um, you know, how your, your personality, I think, comes into your style of drawing, how your feeling comes into your style of drawing, um, you know, your, your sort of surroundings, all of that type of stuff comes into, you know, how you create something. So and that's why I don't. I'm really happy to share everything. Anything that I know, I'll share, you know, uh, because, um, yeah, you're you and I'm me. So, right, down here again. Right, OK, so I'm going to use the white again. Um, and I'm going to just burnish again. Again, really gently. I'm not using hard pressure here at all. Um, this um, museum aquarelle, actually, I think is a really, really good choice for doing this. I think I might have used the luminance white the last time, and they, that was a really good one as well. So that's quite a waxy, soft pencil. Um, the museum aquarelles are. I think they're the, one of the most expensive pencils that you can buy. Um, they're water soluble and they are beautiful. Very, very beautiful pencils. If I don't have a Museum Aquarell white, what could you use? If you don't have a Museum Aquarell, you could use um, any white pencil that you've got. If you've got a Polychromos, use that. Um, if you've got a Prisma, use that. Uh, if you've got a luminance, use that. If you've got a... Um... Now, I'm not sure about the Pablo. The Pablo might be a little bit too velvety, but that probably would work as well. Uh, you could use a light, fast white. Um, any any white will do, or sort of like a blending pencil. And failing that, if you haven't got anything like that, just grab a spoon, <laughs> which sounds really silly. You could go over it with a spoon, and that would, that would do the same. It wouldn't do the same thing, but, you know... If you were stuck on a desert island, you only had blue pencils and no white and you had a spoon, you could do that. <laughs> so 
Sounds like a book, doesn't it? Um, yeah. So you you can use, you know, whatever you've got, you can use. Of course you can. Um, and, it, and it'll work. It'll work fine. Um, this is just kind of what I'd used before and it worked well. Um, and, and like I said before, the reason I don't use the polychromos is because it can have a, like a bit of a resist. It can kind of resist other colours going down on it, which is great for, you know, using it in highlights where you don't want to you don't want colour to go. Um, but when you want to build colour up, you want to be able to layer over quite nicely. So. Right. So that's, that's starting to look quite nice. So let's get the black in now um, on the pupil area. So my black is um, it's got a bit of a funny end because it fell on the floor. So anybody who knows me knows I'm I'm. Oh, honestly, you'd, you'd all, if you love your pencils, and I love my pencils, but they they do kind of, the dogs swipe them off my table with the tails and they go everywhere. And then I'm, I'm tidying up and I find like half a dozen on the floor. I'm like, oh, I wonder where they've gone. Emily guessed, how do you fix the finished colour into pastel matte? Do you stop for flyaway pigment? Do you need to burnish or just use fixative? I don't use anything, um, Emily. I once used, when I first started drawing, I um, used fixative because it's kind of what you do, isn't it? You know, you, you use hairspray or, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, I'll just put some, yeah, I should be using fixative because obviously I don't want any of my colours to go, you know, come off or anything like that. Um and um, I completely ruined a commission piece that I'd done um, and um, had to do it again. So it's it's up to you. Some people do use um, a fixative. I don't. And pastel matte, they market it as you don't need a fixative. Um, I tend to have my, all of my pieces are um, mounted or matted um, and covered with an acid-free um acetate wrapping um before they go off to wherever it is that they're going to go and a lot of them are framed so um i would recommend when you're framing that you have um like a gutter so that if any of the pigment does fall out like you would with a pastel drawing then it doesn't kind of collect catch on your glass you need like a bit of a gutter in there uh right so let's put a little bit of gray in there now so i'm going to use the warm gray uh cold gray four and I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of this grey into here. I mean, it's up to you whether you want to use a fixative. I just find it changes my colour. Um, and, um, you know, I'm just very careful with my finished piece. OK, so just getting this warm grey in here. So again, I'm quite sort of speedy when I'm putting my colour in. I'm going to put a little bit of this the turquoisey colour into there as well so that when I come to burnish it again kind of get a, a bit of a, um, a combination of those two but you can see the eye starts to come to life when you add these shadowy bits um, you know that's when it starts to look relatively real Okay, so just bring a little bit of this in here as well. So I'm using the cold greys because I'm using blues. Uh, if you were drawing a cat with yellow eyes or green eyes, you probably um, you probably would use sort of more warmer greys. Um, just to kind of fit in with the hues that you're using you know those the predominant colors a bit more cold tea i can see there's some um it really really nice actually that um, you know, people are ask, answering other people's questions, which is fantastic, and that's what I really love about the community that is sort of I'm starting to build up, is that you know if you if you give stuff, other people start to do the same, and um, I just think it's so nice that other artists share their knowledge really freely, 
you know so um you know if you do have any ideas or anything like that please do share in the comments you know answer any questions or anything it's um really really good okay so just bringing that around there as well so that's made quite a difference bringing in those um the shadowy bits there so again i'm now going to go in again with the uh with the museum white and just I have to admit to not being particularly careful with what I'm doing here. <laughs> Just slapping the colour on. Okay. So it's not been it's not been that painful, has it? It's not been that slow. We've got two two cat eyes done in, you know, two hours. It's not that bad. And they're quite big. Saying that, if if, if this had been uh, Jason's um, live stream, he'd have done the he'd have done the whole bloody cat. <laughs> the whole cat would be done. <laughs> I'd have a whole myriad of eyes. <laughs> I must admit, I did I did enjoy watching his live stream. Um, it's just it's just so interesting watching how how other artists do stuff and uh, how other mediums work. It is um, really really interesting. This might be something like this might be interesting as a as a sort of like a as we were talking about a, a a friendly head to head, weren't we? So that might be quite a nice idea to do something like this. We'll give him a whole cat to do, and I'll just draw one eye. <laughs> okay, so I'm just sort of pressing a little bit harder to get some sort of um, lighter bits in here as well, and just down here as well. Okay, and then we're going to go dark, 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 dark. So I'm going to go uh, dark indigo down here. And you can see on my pastel mat that this is going down really quite nice and smoothly because we've got sort of two or three layers in there. You'll also see that we've, we've built some really nice color and we haven't actually used a massive amount of layers. I mean, this is a sim This is quite a simple process. You could, you know, you could make it a lot more complicated if you want to, and, and add a lot more layers. But for me, this is quite a a simple way of creating some, you know, fairly nice looking cat eyes. So again, just bringing that um, dark indigo in there. Please do a bit of the fur if possible, Bonnie. Oh, gosh. I'm not sure whether we're going to have enough time, to be honest. Um, I might do a little bit of this, keep this and do a little bit of this live streaming. Um, I've done quite a lot of live streaming on Facebook recently. And I've done, I did, I don't know whether you managed to catch the, um, the, the pour that I did. I finished the pour. Um, that was, uh, that was quite, that was quite good. Quite enjoyed that. Right, so I'm going to use the um, Payne's Grey and just sort of lift where I've put this dark line. I'm just going to go into the line and kind of lift it out a touch. Just bring that into there. And then darken around here again. So you can see I'm not being gentle. I'm not well. Gent I am being gentle, but I'm not being particularly particular about where I'm where I'm putting stuff. I'm just sort of, you know, whacking it in. Um, all right. So let's go a bit dark around here. And then we can really start to darken up. So gently, just bringing this colour in over the top. Start to bring in more of this. As you can see, it's still it does go it goes down quite grainy. Um, still, you know, even when you burnish the pastel mat, when you go back in with a darker colour, it it will um, it'll be grainy again. 
Um, you know, and understanding that and knowing that that's what's going to happen um, allows you to sort of um, be OK with it. It's when you don't understand that, that that's what's happened, that you think you've done something wrong. That's when um, that's when it starts to get a bit horrible and you start to kind of doubt what you're doing. Um, you know, so I was saying to somebody the other day, I actually I don't anymore, but I actually used to have a piece of masking tape on the top of my drawing board that said something like, no, it's going to look absolutely horrible for about two hours. <laughs> so I had to keep reminding myself that it would look really awful for a couple of hours and then it would start to come right. And, you know, as long as you know that and you know that's part of the process and that's OK, you know, it's when you sort of put down pencil and you think this looks absolutely dreadful and but you don't know why you think it's you, but it's not, it's just the medium. Right, so I'm just going to use a little bit of black up in here. A little bit of black around just to darken again. And up into this bit here. Oops. And then. Around there. And then I'm going to use the white again. Just to sort of smooth it out. Don't have to use a huge amount of pressure. Smooth it out nicely. If you use too much pressure, what's going to happen is it might go a little bit muddy. So you might end up with it looking a bit sort of smeary and muddy. But if you just use a nice light pressure, it will just sort of smush everything in and um, smooth it out. Blend that bit in there. Okay, so let's go a little bit, a little bit, a little bit darker. Perhaps I'm going to use the indanthrum blue, I think, in here. Just in these last few minutes. So I hope everybody's enjoyed it. I hope it's been useful. Um, you know, this isn't a um you I mean an an eye like this, if you went into like huge, huge detail with it, you know. I did off I've done a horse eye before where I did you know, really detailed one and it took me something like ten hours to do. Um but what I wanted to show you was how actually it's quite easy, not you don't have to get bogged down with detail, it's just about layering colour and how to use your pencils to create something that looks, you know, really quite, quite nice. Um, you know, so I, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you know, if you if you don't subscribe, if or if you've not subscribed to my channel, do do think about subscribing because I've actually I'm spending a little bit more time at the moment and um, a bit more energy in um, sort of popping videos up on YouTube. Um, you know, so I've got a few in the pipeline. Um, you know, and of course, if you want sort of like some really in-depth tutorials, if you want to draw my the ram that I just did, <laughs> um, he is uh, he's a full he or he will be a full tutorial in May on my Patreon. Um, you know, and with Patreon, you get all sorts of stuff. We're doing a doing a live um, or a Q and A for all the tiers. We're doing that next Friday, I think. And I've got a, um, an artist from London who's coming on and we're doing a, a, a Q and a session on Zoom, which will be really fun. Um, you know, so I've got all sorts of different things that I do on Patreon, not just um, not just the uh, the tutorials. So it's quite a nice place to be. Right, I'm just going to darken up that bit here again up here because this bit here is really quite dark. Um, so if you've got any more questions that you want to just throw at me. I'm not going to leave directly at four, but um, you know it won't be far off. I've got to go and take my doggies for a walk. Um, they're actually very good. I was thinking I, I'd maybe set up like a dog cam or something. That might be quite nice for one of my live sessions. So you can just see them laying around snoring. 
I'd have to wear proper socks though instead of the odd ones that I always end up wearing. Right, and then let's just go through there again. A little bit of blending. Again, we don't have to go to town. Let's blend that out as well. And we'll just do this little bit. So, um, do I offer beginner tutorials? Um, yeah, uh, um, this, that was an interesting question that somebody asked me the other day, actually. And, and um, uh, the majority of my tutorials are, um, I've, I've chosen because I really like the subject. And then some of them are a little bit easier than others. Um, but what I tend to do is I talk you through everything. So when I record my tutorials, it's like I'm drawing here. Um, and you get my everything, you get all of my thought processes as I'm kind of drawing. Um, so I, I explain why I'm doing something, how I'm doing something. So you get, you know, the real the real basics at the beginning, but they might be quite complicated um, subjects that I'm drawing, um, you know. And then I've also got some real beginner ones that I'm doing on. Um, I've got some Zoom ones that are coming up that are really 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 beginner ones and I'm 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 going to put some more beginner ones onto Patreon as well um, but I tend to find even with complete beginners who come in and and work on work on some of my tutorials you know their development is astounding and I don't think it's because you know I, I'm an amazing teacher or anything like that I think it's because they just jump in and they just do something that maybe they, they hadn't or they they maybe wouldn't have done or wouldn't have chosen to do if they'd have been doing it themselves, if that makes sense. Um, plus, they have so much support, not just from me, but from, um, you know, from everybody else in my patronage. It's it, it's it's absolutely amazing. Um, you know, the uh, the support that that comes about. It really is. It's fantastic. So, yeah, I, I'd say I'd say all of them, all of them were, were, were suitable for beginners. Um, and I just think, I just think, you know, jump in, just get, just crack on. <laughs> um, you know, it's how I learn stuff. I, I like to just jump in at the deep end. Um, right. So I'm just going to do this little bit here, like we did the other one. It's not really the right color, but, and then I'm going to put a bit of blue in there, a bit of the sky blue in there, I think. And then I'm going to use the cold grey one, just like lightly burnish over the top of that, smooth it all out. Okay. And then let's just get that cold grey. This is the cold grey four. I'm just bring a little bit of context into kind of around there. So what I'm doing here is I'm just sort of bringing in texture rather than rather than fur. I'm just getting a little bit of again just putting like a bit of shadow in there. Shadow around here. shadow in there as well um, and then just bring a little bit in there it's a bit darker on the top there so I'll just sort of sketch it in uh hi tally i'm about to start the fur what colors would you start with and layer up oh gosh you're 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 way ahead of me <laughs> um what i would suggest is you have a really really good look at your um reference photo tally um now i would say there's some there's some unusual colors in there there's some pinky colors there's some really warm um grays in there um, and there's some sort of browny colours in there as well. So I would be choosing something that um, you've got a range of those lovely soft colours. Um, now, 
don't well you I think you're using a hot pressed paper aren't you I don't think you use pastel mat anymore um try not to dwell on the details of the hair of the fur um you know try to sort of ignore that and just get sort of your uh, the texturing um you know that type of stuff quite quickly because um otherwise you'll end up with sort of like spiky fur you know when you want nice soft fur um, just using the Payne's Grey here a little bit more, just along this edge. Um, you know, so with fur, it's it's about getting it nice and soft. Right. So I think we're pretty much finished there. I know mine's not identical to the photo, and we've got probably got some lighter areas in there, but um, but hopefully that has given you a really good idea as to how to quite simply. I know it's not dead easy or anything like that, but, you know, you, you, you can create eyes without having to really, really go to town. Well, let's just get some of that, um, some of this turquoisey bit in here as well. You know, without having to go to town, um, you know, with, with getting bogged down with detail. Um, you know, detail's important, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing are your lights and darks. Um, you know, I mean, you could create a piece, you know, not doing any detail and just using your, your tonal values correctly and it will look realistic. So, you know, don't get bogged down with colour and details. Get bogged down with um, getting creating your tonal values. So. Right. So, um, I hope... That you've enjoyed that and that it's been okay what slice tool do i recommend for fur so oops this is in fact i've got a box here let me just get this one out i've got slice tools everywhere hold on oh just make sure it's not got dust all over it <laughs> which it has <laughs> so this is the slice tool that i let me just make sure that i can see what i'm doing um that I recommend. So this is the manual pen cutter. That's what it looks like. And then if I take it out of the box, oh, Vincent, if I take it out of the box, this is what it looks like. Okay. So this is the, the manual pen cutter and it means that you can, you've got this little button that you can slide up and down. And the blade, if you can see, it's a ceramic blade and it's double ended so you can take this out i'm not going to take it out because every time i take it out when i'm live i can't put it back in again <laughs> um but you can see on the edge here it's got a like a chisel shaped blade and when i use the slice on pastel mat i, I hold it in my hand like like that you can't really see it and then i turn it to the left slightly because i'm right-handed and i scrape um so if i was going to use if I was going to put like a little bit of a highlight in here, um, I would kind of scrape away. Can't really see it on here, but it just it just gently scrapes away the pigment. Um, so it's it's really really good for fur, but not not too um, not so it takes over from your pencils if you see what I mean. So you don't want to be taking over from using your pencils. You want to use your pencils to create your fur, and then you want. So if I was doing this cat and I was putting all of the hair in here, I wouldn't be I, on this particular paper. I wouldn't be using the slice tool to create all of that hair. I would be using my pencils to create the hair. You know, so it's it's about sort of. Um, finding a happy medium i think with all of your tools um, but it is a really really good product um, if you're in the uk and you want to buy one um, if you buy from the slice um, i think it's slice.com and it's the english site uh, you can get 10 percent code or you can get a 10 percent discount um, by using my code i'll put it in the description it's but just bonnie 10 bonnie with a y10 um, and you can also get one if you're in the usa um, and you want to buy one from there the, the US site and that's I think it's Bonnie USA 10 um, again I'll put that into my um, I'll put that into the description for you so um, again I hope I hope that's been useful um, you know I know they're not the most spectacularly detailed hours but eyes but I, I'm, I'm hoping that you know people are new to colour pencil people are new to drawing 
you know, you can then start to look at using these sorts of techniques to, to create something that, um, you know, that looks really, really nice. And they're, and they're fun to do and they're using lovely colours. Um, so um, any other questions, you know, please do, please do ask. Um, oh, the one with the orange lid is, um, oh, where's mine? Oh, I don't know where mine is, the one with the orange lid. I've got a ton of them, they're all over the place. <laughs> That's the craft tool, is the one with the orange lid. And then there's the little tiny one, which is this one. Um, this is the uh, precision cutter. That's got a, it's got a load of black in it from the ram, but this has got a tiny weeny little blade. Um, yeah, so anybody who wants to ask me any questions, please do get in touch. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you're interested in... Um, if you're interested in any other sort of something like this, like I'm thinking of doing sort of like one, maybe once a week doing the Spaniel ears should be, it should be fun. Won't it? I will look forward to that. Um, you know, so it's sort of like, um, uh, you know, r right from scratch, um, doing a Spaniel ear. Um, then, you know, I quite like to do that. I do quite like these live, live events, but, um, yeah, do get in touch if, if anybody wants to, um, you know, ask any questions or anything like that. But, um, uh, just a, a huge, huge thank you, a uh, huge thank you to Evie and a huge thank you to um, the lovely Vicky for um, monitoring everything. And I hope I hope it was useful. And I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have a lovely rest of the Sunday um, and um, I will see you all very soon. See you later.